just one of the many pre-owned vehicles here in Richfield Springs. This week, we're visiting a few main streets in the Mohawk Valley. The first main street we visit is an appropriate start to celebrate Black History Month. As we'll learn later, this main street played an important role in the anti-slavery movement. This is Main Street, Whitesboro. Before we start our journey, we start our day like many in Whitesboro, with coffee and baked goods at Star Bakery. Anybody who is familiar with Star Bakery over in East Judica would know about the Marshall family. They have been bringing sweet foods uh, for your sweet tooth for many, many decades. The people of Whitesboro are lucky enough to have an outlet right here on Main Street. If you want to sweeten up your sweetheart for Valentine's Day, this is the place to come. There are dozens of things to choose from, and uh, there are Valentine half moons, there are heart-shaped sugar cookies, and there are <laughs> unbelievably delicious Marianne's. Well, well, when I was in college, I started working weekends, and then I did a favor to my husband now to go out with him and his cousin with the other girl that worked at the bakery 35 years ago. And here I am today. So you married into it. <laughs> I married into it, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, my father-in-law has been in baking. He used to bake in New York City. And then he came to the New York bakery that used to be on Oriskany Boulevard. And then he had an opportunity to buy the Star Bakery. And he talked to his sons and they decided, yeah, that would be a good venture. So they did it. And my husband worked very hard. All of them did. And my brother-in-law, he was in high school when they got it, and he used to fry the donuts before he went to school in the morning. And then after he graduated, he graduated right into full time. <laughs> so what do you do as part of the bakery? Um, I'm a sales clerk, and I do paperwork, payroll, year-end books. Um, I hire and train the girls and well, help out wherever I can. I can make cakes. I've done a little bit of everything. I have a lot of good customers, very friendly, and I just enjoy it. You know, it keeps me going. <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to. <laughs> you just keep going. <laughs> Right next door is the popular Mike's Weisboro Fish Market. Open Wednesday and Thursday 3 to 6, with lines out the door on Fridays from 9 to 7. We head across Main Street to the historic First Presbyterian Church. This congregation and church was built and grew during the tumultuous anti-slavery movement in New York State. The church itself was first started in 1801 as a church meeting house. and a little white wood building. That's what you would have seen on Main Street, which they called the Road to Rome. 1834, they build a slightly bigger church, same site. So the people back then would have been familiar with this, this site of the church. Um, and so that was a red brick building. And like many of the churches, it had galleries all around it for the slaves or the colored people. Um, the organ went in, the organ was made in Utica. And then in the early 1900s, they painted the red brick white, and that's the church you see today. In 1979, like many of the churches, they had a fire. Every church seems to have that in their history. It's uh, very near and dear to all the people in a congregation. And this church, as you see it now, just collapsed, uh, just filled with rubble. But fortunately, the exterior walls are those 1834 walls that they preserved. A good landmark story, of course, at that time people said, the church is now rubble. Should we leave the old thing there or be modern and progressive? Fortunately, they kept the 1834 walls. And that 1834 time was the glory days of this church with the abolitionists. So we have a structure that reflects a significant past. Many of the members of this church were faculty and students of the Oneida Institute here on Main Street. The Institute was America's first biracial academy. The Institute's graduates included such well-known black abolitionists as Jermaine Logan, Alexander Crummel, and Henry Highland Garnett. Right next to the church is the former home of Benjamin Babbitt. Now Benjamin Babbitt was known for his soap making and to many of you out there 
uh, as I remember it, my mother for many, many years used Babo to clean up the counters around the kitchen. That was made world famous by Benjamin Babbitt right here in Whitesboro, New York. It lets me know I'm home. I'm making this Another historic site in Whitesboro is 100 Main Street. The back portion was built in 1780 and operated as a tavern by the son of Hugh White, the village's founder. Last year, the building became home to Colonial Pharmacy when it was purchased by Robert Langdon, protecting it from the threat of being torn down. He has added a pharmaceutical compounding laboratory, but intends to maintain and preserve the building's historic architecture. We leave Main Street Whitesboro and head to Main Street New York Mills. We have visited this village on the show a couple times in the past, but have been told you haven't visited New York Mills until you've tried Trio's Pizza. We were thinking of going in business and um, drove around, driving around, and we found this place. It did not look anything like it does now, but my husband and I, and I said, you know, that place, you could open a place there if you can still do it, because it was so old that we thought, you know, you may not be able to run a business here anymore, but we did. We were able to. So. What do you specialize in? Pizza. <laughs> pizza and wings. We have a very small menu. Pizza, wings, mozzarella sticks. That's about it. We, um, we don't have all the stuff that most places do, but we do it well. So we here. I don't know. <laughs> it's trios because my husband and his brother and his best friend are all in business together. It's a partnership, so they had to come up with a name and trio stuck. They, um, Tom's brother worked at a pizza parlor for a long time and he, uh, he had the knowledge and then he's taught the other two and I can't give away the secret. <laughs> they may have a very limited menu here but what they do, they do very well. The crust here is light and crispy and you come here and try it yourself, you're going to fall in love with it. Across the street, we visit the Woolcott Memorial Presbyterian Church. The ground was broken for this magnificent building in 1881. In 1991, Calvary Gospel Church purchased it from the Presbytery of Utica. New York Mills has always been welcoming to people from around the world. Now, for example, 70% of the congregation is Russian. The congregation here played a very important role in history. They were active in the anti-slavery movement as a matter of fact, 36 young men from here enlisted in defense of the Union, and only 20 returned home safely. <laughs> <laughs>